Good evening, invited guests, parents, families, and friends. On behalf of the cadets, officers, and squadron support committee, I'd like to welcome you to the second annual and hopefully last virtual ACR review of 574 Dakota Royal Canadian Air Cadet Squadron. Um, I thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, for those that do not know me, I am Captain Trevor Davies. I am the commanding officer of 574 Dakota Squadron. Um, and tonight we will be taking part in our second annual uh, virtual ACR. Uh, so in advance, I would like to ask for everybody's indulgence uh, for any technical issues that might, um, might take place. Uh, we are recording this activity. We will post it uh, later onto our Facebook page for any of our cadets that were unable to attend um, and available for, uh, for download. Um, at this time, as many of our cadets come from the cities of Martinsville and Warman, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the, these centers and the surrounding communities for their support of the program and, of course, for the involvement of their cadets. Throughout our uh, presentation tonight, we will have a number of video uh, presentations that we will, we will go through. And at this time, I would... We are going to have a greetings from uh, oops. from the uh, mayor of the city of Warman. Hello, Royal Canadian Air Cadets of 547 Dakota Squadron. I'm Gary Filbachuk, Mayor for the City of Borman. Congratulations on your perseverance over the past year. I understand you've been having weekly virtual interactions for months now. It's not easy, is it? Keep looking ahead. Things are changing for the better. I have a lot of admiration for your commitment and your involvement in your squadron and your community. I see the leadership skills and confidence you're building, and that's setting you up for a lifetime of success. Keep it up. Keep your minds open for new explorations and challenges. Keep setting goals and building your community with one act of service at a time. I'm honored to share these words to you at your annual ceremonial review. Congratulations on everything you've achieved and learned over the past year. At this time, um, we are going to move into our presentation of levels. So for all of the cadets that were with us this year in the um, altered training activities that we had, uh, our level classes were conducted each and every Thursday night virtually from uh, the middle of October up until uh, last week, actually. So at this time, I will be asking for the uh, level officers from each of the uh, levels to present the level awards. So at this time, I'll call upon for level one, uh, true volunteer Colin Kunkel. Uh, good evening, and I uh, just want to, uh, well, I can't see the slide here. We'll just wait for that to come up. But I uh, just want to say uh, congratulations to the uh, cadets that have uh, uh, passed their level one this year. I realize that uh, you know, your first year of cadets didn't exactly go as planned, but uh, um, hopefully we'll uh, have a uh, better year next year and you'll be able to uh, parade in person with the rest of the squadron. So I, I wanna thank you uh, all for sticking it out this year and uh, you know, basically, um, dedicating yourself to the cadet program in uh, you know some trying trying circumstances so as you can see here uh, advancing to advancing to level two is uh, cadet Guthrie 
Cadet Carr, Cadet Russell, and Cadet Sawyer. So again, I want to say congratulations to you all. Thank you again for your uh, your hard work and your dedication, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you in the fall in person, hopefully. And uh, I really hope that uh, once we get back in in person training, that you enjoy the full cadet experience. So thank you very much and congratulations. Congratulations to all those cadets. Uh, at this time, we'll call upon uh, Second Lieutenant Ian Fulford, who was the uh, level two officer to present the uh, advancements from level two to level three. Good evening. Uh, tonight I am pleased to announce that the following people have advanced from their level two and will be moving on to level three. Corporal Ewasau, Corporal Burka, Corporal Kusan, Corporal Diol, Corporal Friday, Corporal Gauthier, Corporal Harrison, Corporal Mian, Corporal Sankovic, Corporal Shaquille, Corporal Sipley, Corporal Switzer, and Corporal Turta Rodwin. Thank you. Congratulations to all the successful level two cadets who will join the ranks of the level three cadets at the beginning of next year. Now for level three, uh, Lieutenant Ryan Omachinski, who is the level three officer is unable to be with us this evening. So in his place, Lieutenant Darwin Hodges will present those cadets advancing from level three. Good evening, 574. And congratulations to the level three cadets advancing to level four. The Flight Corporal Levitoff, Flight Corporal Mansier, Flight Corporal Sepatic, and Flight Corporal St. Pierre. I know it's been a trying year. You've been uh, engaged with the program, and we appreciate that. Congratulations again. Congratulations once again to all the level three cadets advancing. Uh, level four cadets. Level four cadets were under the tutelage of true volunteer Julie Hodges. She as well is unfortunately unable to be with us this evening. So in her place, um, I shall be advancing those cadets in level four. So it is my pleasure to announce the following cadets will be advancing from level four to level five. Sergeant Burka, Sergeant Cromwell, Sergeant Dumaresk, Sergeant Fortuna, Sergeant Harrison, Sergeant Heinbinger, Sergeant Hins, Sergeant Hool, Sergeant Carr, Sergeant Robertson, Sergeant Siddiqui, and Sergeant Zlipko. Congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you in level five and in leadership positions next year. Level five cadets were under the instruction of uh, civilian instructor Jerry Ann Keen this year. And it's my pleasure to call upon her to advance those cadets into level five. Oh, sorry. Where did we? I think we might have had some technical difficulties. I can't even blame anybody this year because. The CEO is the one doing the technical. So these were the, I did the level five cadets, apparently. No. Sorry. The level five cadets are still in level five. That's why we are in this situation. So I apologize to all. <clears throat> But um, at this time, we have a virtual greeting to bring to the squadron.
To the staff and cadets of 574 Dakota Squadron, this is Colonel Joe Mullins of the Fighter Capability Office in NDHQ, Ottawa. I just want to say congratulations for sticking with it this year. Uh, this has been a painful year for activities, but you have all shown your dedication and commitment to the organization. Uh, it is times like this that bring us all together as a community, and you will come out of this pandemic stronger and should all be very proud. I wish you well as you finish off your cadet season and head into summer, um, and I hope to see the squadron get back to some sort of normalcy in the fall. Take care and stay healthy. Cheers. At this time, at this time, I'd like to call upon the chair of our squadron support committee, Mr. Gary Cromwell, uh, to say a few words on behalf of the SSC. Good evening, everybody, cadets, parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, officers, civilian instructors, true volunteers and special guests. On behalf of the squadron support committee, I would like to thank Captain Davies and all of his staff and crew for doing their best to keep the cadet program running this past year. Without your efforts, this wonderful program would not exist. Uh, I would like to thank our director, lead director, Wayne Goldfinch for his advice that he always provides the executive when we're not sure what we're doing. Turn up my volume. I mean, speak louder. Is that better? I would like to thank the public speaking crew this past year, Rhonda and Bonnie Gorlitza, for their excellent work. Um, it was great to participate along with. Rochelle Mansier and Wayne Goldfinch in the judging of the four cadets who uh, participated and chose to uh, compete for zones. Uh, many thanks to our sponsor, the Kinsman Club of Martinsville for their continued financial support. Um, special thanks to the city of Martinsville and the city of Warman for their financial support through community grants. And thank you to all who supported uh, the fundraising activities over this past year. Um, best wishes to all the cadets uh, this summer. Look forward to meeting uh, everyone in person this fall. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cromwell, for uh, your kind words. I know. Uh, on behalf of the staff, we can't thank the support that uh, you and your SSE have shown us throughout the year. Um, and we look forward, we look forward to getting back in person and being able to uh, to put all that hard work and uh, fundraising activities that you've done to good use. <clears throat> At this time, we will now move forward to several squadron awards for this year. Um, so the first squadron award, I'd like to call upon uh, TV Colin Kunkel. Uh, good evening once again. <clears throat> um, it is my distinct pleasure to uh, announce the winner of the Esprit de Corps Award. And uh, this award is given to the cadet who best demonstrates the qualities of a team player, a motivator, and in general, a cadet who shows the best attempt at making cadets as fun as possible. Uh, attendance, dress, and deportment, and an overall good attitude in class are also part of the selection for this award, and it is open to all awards, or, <laughs> sorry, 
uh, it is open to the award is open to all cadets. And uh, I'd just like to, to say that the uh, recipient of, of this award uh, was uh, uh, very enthusiastic all year um, in uh, planning different activities, little icebreakers that uh, we did during the, uh, the first part of our, our virtual meetings before going to class and everything like that. Uh, this cadet was always uh, full of uh, ideas and uh, you know never displayed uh, any negativity at all this year. So it's, it's my distinct pleasure to uh, present this award, the Esprit de Corps Award to Sergeant Kiebrey Hins. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations, Sergeant. Uh, at this time, I would like to call upon Second Lieutenant Fulford to present the next award. Oh, there we go. All right, I'll be presenting the top first year cadet award. This award is open to any cadet in their first year of participation and is based on your level of participation this year. Our top first year award goes to Cadet William Sawyer. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call upon a uh, true volunteer, or no, not true volunteer, CI uh, Keen for the, for the next award. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. My microphone's a little further away from me. Uh, this year's Effective Speaking Award um, is awarded to the cadet that moves on to represent the squadron in the Zone Effective Speaking Competition. It is a, an award that is open to all cadets. However, as I said, it is awarded to the person who moves on in the Zone Competition. Who And that cadet is Corporal Nabia Shaquille. Thank you. Congratulations, Corporal. Um, at this time, it's my pleasure to hand out the Junior Leadership Award. So the Junior Leadership Award is open to is open to any cadet who has successfully obtained the rank of Corporal or Flight Corporal. Um, and this cadet would demonstrate positive and motivational leadership towards subordinates and peers. So this time, it's my great pleasure to award this for the 2020-2021 training year to Corporal Jared Kusan. Call upon Lieutenant Darwin Hodges to present the next award. Good evening. The next award is the Most Proficient Cadet Award. It's open to all cadets in the squadron. It's based on having a high level of dedication and commitment, the citizenship, leadership, attendance, and overall participation in the squadron activities, all while maintaining or meeting objectives of the cadet training program. Uh, this year, uh, I know it's been difficult, to assess all these things. We're doing our best to, to see that. But uh, this year, Flight Corporal Anna Mansier has uh, taken this award. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Flight Corporal. Uh, once again, we'll call upon CI Keen. For the fall for the next award. Hello again, everyone. Uh, the next award is the Most Improved Cadet Award. This award is open to all cadets in the squadron. This year, it's based on the most improved level of commitment. Typically, you and we include dress and deportment. However, as we haven't been in person, it's a little difficult to uh, to ascertain those things. Uh, it's also based 
on changes from one training year to the next, and it is presented annually to the cadets who makes the most progressive changes during their training year to reflect the attributes and values of the Air Cadet Movement. It's my pleasure to present this award to Corporal Nabiha Shaquille. Thank you very much. At this time, it is my pleasure to award the top instructor, instructor award. So this award is open to cadets who have successfully obtained the rank of Sergeant, Flight Sergeant, Warrant Officer Second Class or Warrant Officer First Class. The successful recipient demonstrates an above average positive and motivational leadership skills. And this year, I'm very pleased to award this to Flight Sergeant Ilan Gorlitsa. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> okay, at, uh, at this time, we have another, another virtual presentation. Um, for those that remember, uh, a few years back, again, we had a great guest uh, for our, or, or I guess a, a great reviewing officer for our, our squadron. Uh, it was a CF-18, and along with it came a fellow by the name of Captain Tucker Densmore. He's passed on his wishes to us uh, for a good year. He had done up a presentation, but it never got to us in time. Uh, but we do have a clip from his uh, awe-inspiring speech that he gave with, for the squadron. And at this time, we would like to share that with it, with everybody once again. The first point today is about teamwork. And you may not think that a fighter pilot sitting in a single seat fighter jet like the one you see behind there needs to use a lot of teamwork. But that couldn't be further from the truth. I was very fortunate when I started off my career at the Royal Military College to learn about the importance of teamwork. Up until that point in my life, I had succeeded, succeeded pretty much by fluke, in that I could hack most challenges pretty much by myself. In fact, I didn't even play any um, team sports in high school. I studied by myself, I worked out by myself, and I even thought that aviation was pretty much an individual endeavor. And then I hit a wall. I mean, literally, hit a wall. When you get to RMC, you go through a six-week grueling indoctrination period. Imagine all the worst parts of every boot camp movie put into one. Morning inspections, PT, marching everywhere, people yelling at you, and all the while trying to survive your first year of aerospace engineering. And at the end of those six weeks, you and your team have to complete a two-hour-long obstacle course, which culminates in a 13-foot wall. You and all of your squadron mates have to get over that 13-foot wall. So being the confident individual that I was at the time, I figured I would just be the last man over the wall, and when the time came, I would be able to just pull myself over without the help of my teammates, really. So on that day, in front of thousands of people and my entire family, I failed. I simply could not pull myself over that wall. Fast forward four years later to the West Point International Military Skills Competition. I was part of a nine person team representing Canada. On that day, we hit a 13 foot wall and I soared over that thing because I was literally standing on the shoulders of my teammates. That year we finished third in the world. We also had the best time over the 13 foot wall. And that same team later that year assembled a full-sized SGS-232 Air Cadet glider inside the mess hall of the Royal Military College. <laughs> we also relocated a 2,000-pound Victoria-era cannon from the parade square in there for the Sergeant Major to find the next day. <laughs> you will not succeed alone. Seek help and help others. 
My second point today has to do with overcoming adversity. And no matter how talented or hardworking you are, at some point in your life, you're gonna face adversity. Whether it's a bully, rejection, or failure, at some point, you're gonna feel like your life sucks. And on that day, some keyboard coward's gonna be out there to troll you on how spectacularly you failed. While I was on my phase two of flight training, the part where they decide whether you go helicopters, jets, or multi, I failed my nav test. And I failed for a very embarrassing reason, for messing up a landing. At that point in training, no one else fails for something as simple as a landing. And phase two is incredibly competitive. So I figured I'd just kiss my jet slot goodbye. I hit a serious low. And in that time, I thought back to my grade seven teacher who laughed at me and berated me in front of my class when I told him that I wanted to be a fighter pilot. And I imagined him laughing at me for having failed for something as simple as a landing. But it's times like that where you need to put the fight in fighter pilot. I took that failure as an opportunity to prove that I wasn't just a blue skies pilot. And then when turmoil came my way, I wasn't gonna back down. I worked harder, studied, flew my butt off, and last year I graduated as the top pilot of my fighter pilot course. In the words of Randy Pouch, the walls you hit in life are not meant to stop you only to show you how much you really want something. And as for the bullies, the trolls, the people who tell you you can't achieve your dreams, success is the best revenge. Lastly, what is it to be cool? <laughs> By the internet standards, it's trolling other people, making fail videos, and criticizing everybody for just about everything. Social media standards, you've gotta be beautiful, famous, rich, have about a million followers and take selfies everywhere around the world regardless of what's going on around you. But that's not reality. Success in life is not measured by how many followers you have and coolness is not defined by how many likes you get on a post. For what it's worth, I'd like to give you a fighter pilot's perspective on what it is to be cool. Competence is cool. No matter what you do, whether you're a janitor, a businesswoman, an airline pilot, be good at it. Be excellent at whatever you choose to pursue. But always remember to stay humble, because even if you find yourself flying a fighter jet one day, you are never above cleaning puke out of the back seat. Compassion is cool. Cowards sit back, laugh at others, make fun of them and put them down. Cool people help those in need. Cool people take care of others when no one else is watching. And compassion is extremely important because one day when you fail and need a friend, you'll be in need of some compassion. Courage is cool. Courage to stand up to a bully. Courage to stand up for what you believe in. Courage to act when everyone else freezes. And courage to try, even though you might fail. Lastly, being smart is really cool. Fast cars, fighter jets, cell phones, the internet, space travel, modern medicine, all of that brought to you by some very smart, very cool individuals. Being smart is gonna open so many doors for you in life. But make no mistake, you are not born smart. Smart is an attitude. In my experience, if you're cool because of your competence, compassion, courage, and intellect, then you're pretty darn cool by at least one fighter pilot standards. So cadets, at this point I'm hoping that you're feeling ready to go conquer adversity, achieve your goals, help your teammates do the same, but before you do that, there's one very cool thing you need to do. Look into this crowd and thank your number one teammates and your biggest fans, which are your family. 
Thanks to them and the outstanding effort of your CIC officers, you're able to take full advantage of this program and the amazing opportunities within it. All right, so let's give them a huge round of applause. For those cadets that have been around for a while, that was a wonderful opportunity. Um, and throughout the uh, last few years, Captain Densmore has, uh, has kept in touch with the squadron and uh, passed along his greetings through a series of videos. So we look forward to hearing more from him. Um, at this time, it is my pleasure once again to um, add up some hardware. So it's my pleasure to hand out a series of um, the Air Cadet Service Long Service Medal. So to qualify for this, a serving cadet must successfully complete four years of honorable service with no serious infraction, and all currently serving air cadets shall be eligible for this award. So at this time, it's my pleasure, um, and we will do a formal ceremony back in uh, September uh, to award personally to the following cadets who were part of the original group uh, to join our squadron. So congratulations for Sergeant Houle, Sergeant Dumarusk, Sergeant Burka, Sergeant Harrison, Sergeant Cromwell, Sergeant Carr, Sergeant Zlipko, Sergeant Hins, Flight Sergeant Gerlitza, Flight Sergeant Fenner, and Flight Sergeant Lyle. It is my pleasure to present you each with your Air Cadet Service, Air Cadet League Service Medal. Congratulations. Following every successful year um, after receiving this medal, uh, a cadet will be eligible for a CLASP. So for all of those cadets that just received this first level, uh, next year, if they're with the program, they will be presented with their first CLASP and so on. <coughs> uh, this year, it's also my pleasure to award a senior cadet who was part of our original group of seniors to join the squadron. Uh, she is our highest leveled cadet. So as mentioned before, our cadet levels go through one through five. Um, but at this time, it's my pleasure to present second year class to Warren Officer Second Class Pretty McNevin, who, as I mentioned, is one of our senior cadets who have been with the squadron since its formation and came over uh, from another squadron to assist us and enjoyed our company so much that she stayed with us. So 
Uh, congratulations, the Warren Officer Pretty McNevin, on your second year class. Thank I will make arrangements to get it from you so I can get that sent off for you properly. So, okay. So as mentioned, and everybody is quite familiar with the uh, Air Cadet Squadrons are only successful with their partnerships. So as we all know, we have uh, my staff who are all members of the uh, Cadet Instructor Cadre, which is a sub-branch of the Canadian Armed Forces. And we have a great partnership with our squadron support committee, uh, Mr. Gary Cromwell and his group, which are all either active parents or community members that uh, that help out the squadron. And the third partner that we have with this great group is the Air Cadet League of Canada. So at this time, um, I'd like to welcome on behalf of the Air Cadet League of Canada, uh, Saskatchewan chapter, Mrs. Carrie Hari, Mrs. Hodges, to say a few words on behalf of our league representative, Mr. Wayne Goldfinch, who was unable to be with us this evening. Good evening. Can everyone hear me? So hello everyone of the 574 cadets. I will try to make this brief and somewhat interesting. Tonight I am representing the Saskatchewan Air Cadet League on behalf of our League Director Wayne Goldfinch. And for those that don't know, the Air Cadet League is the civilian side of the cadet program in Canada. Pay attention. You pay attention. Somebody's not on mute. This year has not been easy with cancellations, retooling programs, trying to find new ways of learning. It has been a struggle and I'm so proud of all of the staff, volunteers and the cadets for working hard to make this year as successful as possible as it possibly could have been. Thank you so much to the officers and staff for your efforts finding interesting and fun things to do on Zoom. You came up with some pretty interesting guest speakers and projects for the cadets. Well done. Thank you to the SSC and parents for continuing to support the squadron. The fundraising efforts this year were great and we have put enough money in the bank to support the activities that I am sure the officers and staff have planned for you next year. Our parents really stood up to the challenge of fundraising without the help of their cadets and I was amazed. Some parents raised upwards of $1,000 by themselves. But most importantly, I want to thank the cadets for zooming through COVID and making the choice to stay with the program. Clearly you are proud cadets and know the advantage of being involved with the cadet program. You have to admit there were some pretty cool speakers that you would not have normally had a chance to listen to if COVID hadn't happened. I am so proud of all of you. This summer, the Air Cadet League is working with DND to create day camps that will be offering cool activities. Please watch for these day camps and participate when you can. Congratulations to everyone on a diff different but absolutely successful year. Have a great summer. Thank you very much. And as mentioned before, uh, the great partnership that DND has uh, with the Air Cadet League makes this program really what it is. Um, at this time, uh, we're pleased this year, which I know probably every cadet that's on this call this evening is waiting for this section. So we are pleased this year to be able to promote several deserving cadets this year who have, once they've completed their required service time as well as their training guidelines. So at this time, I would like to call upon uh, TV Colin Kunkel to promote the cadets from to the rank of leading air cadet. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so it's uh, my privilege and honor to uh, promote the following cadets from uh, AC to LAC, Leading Air Cadets. That'll be Leading Air Cadet Sawyer and Leading Air Cadet Carr. Uh, again, thank you for your, uh, your dedication this year and in, in uh, these uh, unusual circumstances and uh, look forward to seeing you in the fall. So congratulations on your promotion. Congratulations to those cadets. At this time, I'd like to call upon Second Lieutenant Fulford to promote the next group of cadets. Following people will be promoted to Flight Corporal, Flight Corporal Poussin, Flight Corporal Harrison, Flight Corporal Sankovic, Flight Corporal Gauthier, Flight Corporal Burka, Flight Corporal Sipley, Flight Corporal Switzer, Flight Corporal Shaquille, Flight Corporal Eusile, and Flight Corporal Diol. Congratulations to all those cadets on your promotion. At this time, I'd like to call upon C.I. Keen for the next set of promotions. I am pleased to promote the following cadets from Flight Corporal to Sergeant, Sergeant Lebedoff, Sergeant Mantier, and Sergeant St. Pierre. Congratulations. Congratulations to those cadets. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call upon Lieutenant Hodges for the next set of promotions. Hello. That's being uh, promoted to the rank of Flight Sergeant. Would be Flight Sergeant Cromwell, Flight Sergeant Carr, Flight Sergeant Zlipko, Flight Sergeant Hins, Flight Sergeant Hool, Flight Sergeant Dumaresk, Flight Sergeant Harrison, and Flight Sergeant Moskal. This is where teamwork really starts to show and your willingness to work with each other to lead the rest. Congratulations. Congratulations to all those cadets that have been promoted. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of history. So uh, for those cadets that are new with us, those cadets that uh, and, and parents and family that are with us, the way the promotions work within the Air Cadet Program, it's a combination of time in served, um, as well as uh, attendance, as well as the uh, levels that you are, that you are at. Uh, so for all of these cadets that have been promoted up to this point, it is solely based on their good conduct uh, throughout their time um, within the squadron and their um, um, and their training levels. Moving forward, uh, it's my my pleasure uh, as a commanding officer uh, for the next set of uh, promotions. So once you move forward after the rank of flight sergeant to the ranks of warrant officer second class and warrant officer first class, you have to sit a uh, merit review board. So the merit review boards uh, are usually comprised of three members and at 574 we've been very fortunate that we get a uh, CIC officer from outside of the squadron that comes in. We have the uh, SSC participate in this merit review board and finally we have the uh, Air Cadet League of Saskatchewan participate in in this review board and essentially these cadets are applying for jobs within the squadron. And it's pretty tough. Um, the cadets themselves, uh, if you ask each and every one of them, they'll, uh, they'll let you know that it's uh, usually not the easiest feat to, to, to go. You're under the, the spotlight per se, uh, with questions being asked for you. Asked for you. And, uh, and all of the cadets that we've had go through it have all been very successful and they all turned out to be very well uh, rounded cadets. So this year we had two cadets that sat their merit review boards that we had 
here in the spring. We will be having merit review boards uh, in the fall as well. So at this time, it is my pleasure to be able to promote to the rank of Warrant Officer Second Class, Warrant Officer Second Class Gorlitza, and Warrant Officer Second Class Lyle. Congratulations. At this time, we also have uh, attending this evening, our zone training officer, Captain Deb Nanachowski. Uh, she is our, the support individual between us here at the squadron and our officer in charge and headquarters. So at this time, I would like to offer to her, um, I know because she's been trying to get out to uh, see the squadron uh, and due to the pandemic and everything else, it's been kind of tough. Uh, but I, this time I'd like to call upon her if she wishes, um, I'm throwing her on the spot here. Um, if uh, she would like to address the, the cadets. Absolutely, I'd love to address the cadets. I just got to get my camera. There we go, my camera's turned on. Uh, so congratulations to everybody at 574. Um, this is actually my 10th ACR, actually 11th ACR I'm attending this year. Uh, the one good thing about uh, COVID is I've been able to do them all virtually. So this year I'm able to attend every single one of them. And uh, your ACR is absolutely incredible. I love the fact that you're bringing in other guest speakers and sprinkling them throughout the program. That's uh, an absolutely wonderful idea. I wanna really congratulate the kids this year um, and, and the staff for coming up with some very creative ideas of, of things that you can do. Uh, normally you wouldn't be able to have, you've had guest speakers in and you've done very creative ways of delivering the training. And those are probably things we wouldn't have done. We wouldn't have thought outside the box to do that. So along with this being a, a crazy year, we've thought outside the box and we've come up with some really original ideas. And, and I think that that, that is good. We've learned how to be much more flexible with technology and, and with signing in and trying to listen to other people. Um, so we've learned a lot of skills during uh, this time. We're much more resilient, I think, than what we were two years ago. Um, so let's take all of that and let's move forward with that. And I think we're gonna become much, much stronger because of that. Um, I also wanna pass on congratulations. Uh, from Lieutenant Commander Can, the OC of Central Prairie Area, and also from the CO of RCSU Northwest, Lieutenant Colonel Letelier. Uh, they'd like to congratulate uh, 574 and, and everything that you guys have done this year. Um, and know that I am, like everybody else, crossing my fingers and really, really hoping that we can all get back together again in the fall. And uh, I'm looking forward to coming out to see 574 and uh, see everybody and, and, and be able to talk with you face to face. So congratulations on a successful year and uh, have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain Anatoski. Um, at this time, once again, we have another video greeting, which I will queue up here. Hi everyone, it's Major Blake McNaughton from the Canadian Mission Control Center uh, saying hi to you all again after you invited me to one of your parade nights to speak with you, uh, which was a highlight of my year. So thank you for that. I want to reach out and say congratulations on your fantastic year. Uh, I know it's been hard, it's been non-standard, but you've still achieved a lot together and as individuals, so you should be proud of what you've achieved. And remember that this will make you stronger and more resilient going forward. So whatever you do, 
uh, going forward into the next year of 2022, or whether it's cadets or whatever comes after cadets, uh, be proud, hold your head high, take the attributes that you've learned and apply them to your life. I wish you the best and congratulations again, 574 Dakota Squadron. Cadets, parents, uh, league members, staff, and family that are with us tonight. Um, I told my staff that I haven't uh, prepared a speech, so everybody is kind of worried that uh, you know Captain Davis has a tendency to go on. But I promise I will keep this uh, very short and very sweet. This has been a very trying year. Um, I can't say enough to the the staff that we have been fortunate enough to have at this squadron for the great program that they were able to put on for you cadets in order for you to stay with us throughout the year. Our numbers did not drop substantially, which I was very pleased with. Um, and I share Captain Anachowski's uh, hope that come September, we will be back in person and we will be able to forget about the past that happened, but it has also given us great opportunities. We've had wonderful speakers throughout the year. Um, we heard from a number of them this evening as well. And I know a lot of cadets, including myself, still recall the, the, uh, the great conversation we had with the University of Colorado and uh, looking at satellites um, and, and basically all the different guests that we were able to, 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 to come in. We've been able to see all of our senior cadets adapt uh, with their instructional technique and to be able to offer a stellar learning experience uh, for you as a cadet. Um, and, I, and I get it. You spend all day on, on, uh, on video conferencing with school and then you come to, come to us here at Cadets and you do the same. So thank you very much for sticking with the program um, because we are here for you. If this program wasn't go taking place in the, the Martinsville Warman area, all of us that are here tonight uh, would probably be just sitting around. So uh, thank you for keeping us uh, engaged and allowing us to give a wonderful program to you uh, as wonderful cadets. Uh, to Gary and your crew with the SSC, I know it's like a broken record and I keep telling you this and um, and I'm glad that the league keeps recognizing it uh, year after year, but you are truly uh, the best SSC in the province, uh, if not in the country. The tenacity that uh, your crew has uh, was just amazing throughout the year, uh, even during this time that we had, you still did fundraising. You've set us up for for the next few years so that we'll, we will be able to uh, to offer a great extracurricular program. And uh, I'm glad that uh, you've increased my budget by at least $25. So I thank you very much for, for allowing that. So uh, the support, uh, Captain Anachowski, the support that we've had from you and the OC um, as well as region. I know it's been never ending uh, from, from all the work that you've had to do. In order to uh, uh, in order for us to be able to have the tools to put forward this program, so uh, thank you very much for that. And once again, cadets, um, you are, you know, I'm somewhat biased, but uh, uh, I think the, the cadets at five seven four um, are the best cadets in the province and the luckiest cadets in the province for the program that they they've been able to have. Um, we have two more things to go and then we are going to be done. I know everybody's looking forward to ending off the year. Uh, a couple of things I did want to mention, uh, all those cadets that were promoted, um, we will keep track of all of your, your promotions and TV Kunkel uh, will ensure that we get uh, all of those ordered so that when we hit back into the new year, everybody will be given their new ranks. Those cadets that were um, uh, awarded uh, presentations this evening. Uh, we will have those for you in September. Uh, 
The same with the cadets that received their long service awards. Those will be presented uh, formally at a parade in September. We will get them court mounted for you. And those cadets that were promoted, once again, we will ensure in September that you get um, all that information. Before we go this evening, I would like, uh, see Akeen has asked that we get everybody to turn your cameras on so that we can get a photo of, uh, of everybody that's here so that we can post out. So uh, let everybody kind of And on top of it, it's a sneaky way for me to do a uniform inspection. So if you're if you're able to, if you have if you're not on your phone and you and you have a camera, uh, please click on it, open it up so that we can get everybody's smiling faces, um, and we will then take a couple snaps. Uh, I'm gonna let CI Keen do this because I've been wrecking most of the night, so. Thanks everyone, it's great to see your faces. Okay, great job everybody. So uh, we have one last thing uh, to go through or do. <clears throat> Just one over here. <clears throat> so as everybody knows, um, our squadron has been very lucky when it comes to um, getting reviewing officers. Um, I'm probably, um, and I'll deny that I've said this, uh, Captain Anachowski, but I'm probably one of the only COs that keeps turning down the CO of the region to come out for a, to be our reviewing officer, because we've been very lucky to have uh, Mr. Colin Kunkel with us, who has more contacts uh, in the aviation world than I have socks and each and every year he keeps outdoing himself. So of course, with the, the pandemic, we thought that, uh, you know, I think the pandemic that, that was created was really created uh, to try and punish us at 5741 to prevent us once again from getting out and going gliding. And I think, it also figured that it would be able to try and stop uh, Mr. Kunkel from once again outdoing us. So as a commanding officer, there's usually one thing, uh, and most parents would probably get this as well, it's usually one thing that you don't want to hear when you're in a meeting is somebody mention, and I quote, hey, I just wanted to let you know I went and did something end quote. So most people get kind of worried when when you hear that. Um, and when Mr. Kunkel said that, I was a little trepidatious to what he's done. Um, and this, cadets, parents, and guests, is what CI Kunkel has once again done. Greetings to the cadets and the officers and the volunteers and the families of 574 Dakota Squadron. My name is Colonel Chris Hadfield. I was an air cadet. I was an officer in the Royal Canadian Air Force serving in defense of Canada during the Cold War and served uh, as an astronaut with the Canadian Space Agency uh, and flew in space three times and commanded the International Space Station. Um, 
And I think the motto of the Air Cadets, to learn, to serve, and to advance, has never been more important than this year. To learn from all of the obstacles that we've had to face with this global pandemic. To serve, to take care of each other, to take care of ourselves, but also look at what is good for the community and good for the nation. And most importantly, how do we come out of this actually ahead? How can we advance? How can we take this cultural and the technological changes that have come and, and allow us in this particular form of warfare uh, to, to be a better country, to be a better uh, population here on the surface of the world? The ancient motto of aviators of per ardua had astra has never been more applicable through adversity to the stars. Congratulations to everyone at 574 Dakota and have a great annual review. So thank you very much, Mr. Kunkel, Kunkel for once again outshining yourself. That cadets, parents, guests, brings us to the end of the 2020-2021 training year for 574 Dakota Squadron. I look forward to being able to see everybody in person next year. Um, please keep checking the Facebook page and the web page. We'll still continue to update over the summer, especially once we know what is going to be happening. Uh, this evening's recording we will sort something out to be able to give have it accessible for everybody else and we look forward to seeing you all in the new year take care and have a great summer good night sir congratulations on a fantastic acr Thank you everybody who made this evening, even though we're all virtual and at home, that's, you know, still worked hard to make such a, a very important evening, such an amazing one. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>